Hey, hi, hello, how are you? I'm Pia and welcome to the start of a new weekly reading vlog. So this vlog I've decided to do a little bit differently. I did turn on the light for this clip just for the sake of, you know, making something cute. We are going to be reading all books that are the same color. Yay! I was looking at my unread books and um, I just filmed a video which is like my TBR pile essentially. That video won't be up for a while. But notice that I have a lot of unread red books. Also, I just love the pun. I hate that I love it. I mean, let's go through the books that I have that are red. Wait, okay, these are all of my red books that I have not read. I'm gonna keep making that joke this entire video. I may or may not read some of these. So we have Little Princess by Frances Hogson Burnett. Throwing in a classic here. I mean, it is a children's classic, so I'm more likely to actually read it. This is, if you're wondering, the Puffin and Bloom edition. Then I have Dirty Rowdy Thing by Christina Lauren. We've got some smut on the list. This is the second book in the Sweet Filthy Boy series. Like, what is it? These titles are whacked. You know, if we're looking for some Smut. Then we have Lost and Found by Jane Sigal. I do what it's about, but I think, I don't know what I think actually. We've got Love, we got the US and the Union Jack, so you know. I have Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grattan. This is like a alternate history about World War II and it's like if Hitler had won and it's about this uh, girl who's trying to kill him. And then we have Everything Beautiful Is Not Ruined by Danielle Young Ullman. And this is like a hard hitting number. Ooh. But yeah, so those are like the books that I found that are actually like read. And then I probably will have some like audiobooks that I don't own that I'll read throughout the week. I'm only gonna update you on these types of books, the only ones that fit the theme, but I'll probably be reading other books just cause guess what happens. Anyway, I've been filming all day today. <laughs> by all day, I mean for like a few hours. That's my day. Like my day is like a few hours of <laughs> and then editing and dying. What you gonna do? I've been filming the most lately. The beginning of the year is like the busiest season for videos, but I think I'm going to, it's supposed to be snowing today and it like just didn't. So I'm gonna go on a run and then when I get back, I'll probably do some reading. I have no idea. I think the first physical book I'm gonna pick up is Everything Beautiful Is Not Ruined because I'm just very into this one. I already put my bookmark in there. It's just speaking to me today, I guess. Man, do I have quite the haul for you. So we're sitting down so we can film. <laughs> so first I saw Ashley today, very briefly. We are all kind of like one degree separation from COVID right now. Our normal exchange and she's heading back to campus uh, very soon. I just think this is really funny. The One Direction book. <laughs> Can I count this towards my Goodreads challenge? I don't know. Yeah, she said she found out at a thrift store. I don't know. I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> and then she got me like a real book, which I've never heard of. It is called This Is Where the World Ends. Maybe I actually have heard of this. Can't exactly remember. We got Janie, Micah, Micah, and Janie. This is how it's been since the day they were children when Janie Vivian moved next door. Janie says Micah is everything. She is not. Where Micah is shy, Janie's outgoing. Where Micah loves music, Janie loves arts. Perfect friendship as long as no one finds out about it. Sus. Okay. <laughs> but then Janie goes missing. Oh shit. I love stories where people go missing. Oh my god. Micah must find a way to put together the broken pieces of his best friend. She always kills it with the books, um, obvious. Let's show the books I got in the mail. So I decided to pick up some of my favorite books from last year. We have This Will Be Funny Someday by Katie Henry, because it's one of my favorite books. And then I got We Can't Keep Media Like This by Rachel and Solomon. This book is so good. I also got Never Saw You Coming. I literally just got this. Ooh. And then I have another book. I don't have scissors. I have scissors over there, but. <gasps> She's so, oh my gosh, wait, she's so short. Okay, I got uh, When You Get the Chance by Emma Lord. This is her new book, it literally came out today. I'm so excited about this. This is about a girl trying to find her birth mother. She's like trying to get on Broadway. I love Emma Lord. I have my little, oh, I just covered them. But I have my other Emma Lord books back there. Oh, satisfying, let's see. Ooh, I'm so excited about this one. She has not done me wrong. Only 300 pages. Then I got some stuff from Target. I got some clothes. I, I don't buy clothes very often. I feel like I say that every time I buy clothes. Oh my gosh, look at this hat. It looks like a grandma. It looks like a grandma hat and I love it so much. Look at that. Kind of love it. Kind of, I got this top and it's like a, it's kind of like a, a carpet <laughs> or like a tapestry. Isn't it cute? It's like a little crop top and it had a matching skirt. They just didn't have my size in the store. So I'm gonna get the matching skirt. It's like just a mini skirt. Picture a mini skirt in this pattern and that's what it is. I love, I love hauling these really cute clothes while I literally dress like this. I got this cardigan. I thought it was super interesting. The color for one, I mean, it's like this like kind of light pinkish purple with all these like colorful specks on it. And it's just like this huge chunky cardigan. Um, I have an, a couple other cardigans that I just big fan of cardigans. I only brought one cardigan with me. Oh, and then I got this fun top. I like having fun tops for like parties and stuff. Uh, I don't go to parties that often, but I don't like wearing the same thing at every party. <laughs> this one's just too fun. It's like just, it's so, it's just this cropped little sparkly. It's so sparkly. Oh my God, I love it. It's so cute. Oh, I basically mainly needed leggings because when I came home, I didn't really bring, I didn't bring any like really 
I think I just brought source bras to run in and I have been having the struggle of uh, wearing the leggings that I have here, which one of them is fine. I think even maybe a second works, kind of. My other leggings do not function <laughs> well with me running. I got another pair of just like, these are literally like basic black high rise leggings. Like, I don't know. When I really like them, they're just like, they're just like black jeans that are like kind of vintage looking. I don't know. And then they have like the rip at the knee. But I thought this was really funny because I just bought them. I went to Target and then I went to Ashley's house to drop off her gifts and she was wearing these jeans. And I was like, girl, I just bought those. <laughs> we're twins, as always. I also didn't bring any jeans with me. Which is gonna be great because I'm gonna be here for so long. Um, but for right now, I need to go put up a video. We were supposed to watch Harry Potter tonight and my mom bailed. Hello, my lovely friends. It is now quite late. Well, not that late. It's, it's nighttime. And I can finally give you a good synopsis of this book. <laughs> so this is Everything Beautiful Is Not Ruined. I'm now 75 pages into it. I can tell ya what's going on. So basically we have our main character Ingrid who is going to this kind of like camp wilderness experience for like troubled teens essentially and she really feels like she doesn't belong. We at the start of the book are not aware of why exactly she's there. You have a lot of like ex-convicts and people who are on the streets and like a lot of uh those sorts of situations so you really don't know what her background is or why she or how she got here but through this you're reading her letters that she's writing to her mom and like some other people in her life that she's not sending but then just like documenting her experience as well as little bits of like her past starting in when she's like eight six to ten so like uh, early in her life and um you start learning more about her life obviously and her relationship with her mother which is super interesting her mother was like this big larger than life personality for a lot of her life and was like super important to her and then once her mother's like career started to crash and burn she kind of started this really bad downward spiral with which i assume influenced how Ingrid got to where she is. But yeah, it's super interesting right now. I'm really enjoying it. Definitely intrigued to find out more about this character and relationship and like I said, how she got to where she is. Yeah, it seems like it's gonna be a really impactful book. It's also pretty funny. I also love like everything beautiful is not ruined. I love that quote. This will have some themes of like mental health and uh, mental illness, which I think are really interesting and things that I always like reading about. So I'm going to try to go to bed before midnight. That's going on. Listen to some of my favorite murder today. Having a blast doing that. Hello, my friends. It is Friday. I wanted to wait to update the vlog until I finished the book and then I just like haven't finished the book. Wearing my favorite sweatshirt. And I'm now like 100 pages from finishing this book. And I am like 60% into Good Girl Bad Blood, which is the sequel to Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I picked this up as my audiobook and it is like, I love these audiobooks more than life. I love. I'm so glad it has a red cover so I can read it for this week. Literally like, I'm in love. These books are so fun. Like first book, I mean, they're not like, I mean, they're kind of dark. I don't know, the whole like mystery, they're so like addictive. The first book is like following uh, the investigation of this guy who is convicted of murder of his girlfriend. Our main character is trying to find out what actually happened because she doesn't believe it. Um, Cause she was like friends with him and whatever and uncovers a lot of fucking, <laughs> a lot of stuff. This one is following a disappearance in the same like small town. I'm like, how does so much shit happen in a small town? It's really good. Really love the audiobooks it has like a podcast element like the, the whole thing is like she has a podcast like our main character has a podcast and it's really awesome like it's, it's a full cast it's really cool it's snowing outside and i really need to go on a run i haven't gone on a run in a while this week has felt really weird because i haven't really done much and i've been really basically how am i supposed to live laugh love in these conditions i don't even know how to not be stressed at this point i'm glad 2022 is just looking to be the same thing as 2021 it's just the same vibes guys i look like i just got back from private school but I didn't. Oh, I looked well. Uh, good Girl, Bad Blood. I finished that. I gave it four stars. Literally. So good. I feel bad calling them fun because like that is really like my reading endorsement when I have like a really good time reading something and I read it really fast and I like really enjoy my time reading it. And so I'm like, oh my God, it was so fun. But like, it's murder. <laughs> something I don't call it fun. <laughs> but I mean, it wasn't like as twisty and turny as the first book, but it was definitely good. I'm now 20% into Dirty Rowdy Thing. This book is not PJ. No, 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 honey, 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 honey. I'm for mature. Like, I don't know. This is the companion novel to Sweet filthy boy. These have the best titles. I mean, I just feel so great saying them. Like, I feel not uncomfortable at all and, like, just so secure. Anyway, I love that my best friend got me this too. Anyway, kind of the plot of the first book is like these three girls go to Vegas to celebrate something. I don't remember. They end up like ho all hooking up with these other three guys and they all end up marrying these guys. So in the first book, it's like the first relationship and they end up trying to kind of like work out the marriage. <laughs> They're like, we're married. Like what if we like stayed married? Everyone else got like an annulment or a divorce or whatever. And so this is the second couple. And like, I don't really know much about this couple to be quite honest with you. It just seems like they're very into like each other, but I don't, I really don't know. But the guy lives on Vancouver Island, which just like 
shout out to me. So I'm like, oh my god, like, represent. Love that. It is a rowdy time, that's for sure. Like, will there be plot? No one knows. <laughs> yeah, he's a Canadian fisherman, like, that's so funny. I don't know. I think they'll fall in love eventually. That's my goal <laughs> for them. Anyways, I'm 20% into it. If you have never listened to a smut book on audio, it's a time. I'm three times speed nonetheless. <laughs> I'm gonna read it. It's fun. Is it the vibe? No one knows. Anyway, we were having a like run on water for some reason, which I was like literally like we have solidified that we are in the apocalypse. I very much got scared. <laughs> we're not. We don't have it anymore. But so I wasn't taking baths, and like my whole point in being <laughs> my whole point in being home. The only reason I came to New Jersey is so I could take a bath. That's so sad. <laughs> One of the most exciting things about being home is that I can take baths because I don't know what it is. They're just the best. So I am gonna get some reading done in the bath. I'm still reading everything beautiful is ruined because I'm very slow at physically reading, and I'm depressed, and this makes me sad too. This book is literally so. So good <laughs> like genuinely I don't even know how to express how much this is doing like I had and I had never heard of this book I love when this happens like this is the fun shit I love it and I did tap something I wasn't planning on tapping this so I but I just like apparently oh uh, that felt it Oof. it was a purple tab it meant like relating to me so something about this book is like really speaking to me right now and I'm really really enjoying it 100 pages left and I'm going to read in the tub a tub tub you unfortunately don't get to come with me because that would be icky after I finish this I'll let me know my final thoughts and then what we're gonna be reading next watching the live stream that Erin and Kayla did yesterday because I missed it <laughs> but I did end up finishing everything beautiful is not ruined I I want to cry <laughs> like uh genuinely like i don't know what happened literally i mean from the title you you would tell this is such a my book and kata we're hanging out but i do think the next one i'm gonna pick up is lost and found just because apparently i'm just like loving books that i have no idea what they're about hi guys i am sitting downstairs on the couch my favorite hoodie right now or sweatshirt reading lost and found i'm like 50 pages into it i'm not sure how i feel about it when i kind of reserve all judgment so far but i can basically tell you that this is about basically a woman and a man and uh the man finds this woman's diary and starts reading it i guess he'll fall in love with her <laughs> i don't know it's supposed to be like bridget jones diary which i've actually never seen so i really couldn't tell you um i'm just rewatching friends just me rewatching friends for the gajillionth time if anyone cares i'm on the end of season five i've got my book two necessities in life book and friends oh boy well i didn't get a lot of reading done because I was on the phone with my parents and then I found out Bob Saget passed away. I was gonna watch Full House, but it's not on Hulu anymore. So I need to go break out my DVDs of <laughs> Full House that I bought literally with my first paycheck ever. You know, didn't know DVD players weren't gonna be a thing. <laughs> literally, that's how I spent my first paycheck. I mean, worth every cent, worth every single dollar. Now we're gonna go cue that up, probably cry some more. I mean, if we're being honest. Alrighty guys, I'm here to close out the vlog, but not before I update you on the last book that I finished for the vlog. It's gonna be a surprise because I hadn't started it. Plus I'm updated you but i just kind of flew through it and then didn't update anyways it's not this book it's not this book uh physical reading became a little bit of a challenge as you saw i was, I was going through it for a little bit but i ended up listening to the audiobook for a little princess by francis hogan burnett now i did it i really didn't know anything about this class i didn't know anything about it i didn't know that this is the author of the secret garden which i read i wanted to say last year but i think i read it the year before <laughs> sorry i had to move it i read the secret garden for, for like work i was tutoring that book so i didn't know that it was the same author so it definitely had like similar vibes but i definitely liked this a lot better than the secret garden i know i didn't talk about the secret garden in this video but it's just like where my head's at it is kind of similar we do have like our main character sarah who is coming from india and she has this really like rich background has this dad who she loves and adores living at the school and there's you know drama with all these girls at the school and she makes friends and she helps people out it's a lot like kind of like the story girl it has like also like Anne of Green Gables vibes but also like it also kind of reminded me like Molly from American Girl I don't know if you guys remember that and then you know something terrible happens and it kind of completely changes her, her life yeah it's really interesting I really love the main character like I said she gave me like Anne of Green Gables vibes which is like the highest praise because you know Anne of Green Gables is my favorite book and that type of really strong will really just creative and imaginative kind of character that makes the best out of a bad situation is like something that I really admire and that I really love in characters so I really loved that um, uh, with our main character. Yeah, I really enjoy this book and I do want to make a video about the classics that I do recommend because genuinely like classics to me are just so daunting it doesn't matter if it's like a children's classic like this that's you know I don't know 200 and something pages or you know a giant classic they're kind of they're just all very daunting to me and all a little bit scary <laughs> in some ways so I do want to make a video about some classics that I personally recommend that I think are a lot more accessible so things like children's classics and things like that are generally obviously um, easier to read and more comprehensible um, but still so beautiful and flowery and have that kind of classic right so dog keeps barking and I don't know why look at the little monkey <laughs> 
I never noticed that. The last thing I was saying about this is it's kind of of its time. Some things, it's not even like that bad. Like I think the Secret Garden might have actually been more offensive <laughs> from what I remember. But yeah, there's like a couple things that are, you know, you wouldn't say that nowadays. But this again was first published in 1905, yeah. But yeah, I'm actually glad I read this. What, a classic? Who have I? Oh! I dropped it. Those books I read for this video. It was fun. I love doing things like this. It's very fun. That being said, make sure to like and subscribe to all the things and I will see you in my next video.